A few weeks ago I did a video basically talking about the real world power draw of GPUs and how much wattage they pull when you're playing games. Now this went down fairly well, I took a few notes from a few of the comments and I'm back with a slightly different video, this time talking about CPUs, specifically the AMD Ryzen 1800X and the Intel 8700K. Now to make this as close of a fair test as I could, I'm using basically all of the same components bar the motherboard and CPU. I'm using the same RAM, the same case, not that that matters, the same power supply and similar-ish coolers, the only main difference being this being a tower cooler whereas that one being a stock cooler. I did also measure the temperatures especially on the A700K just because of that stock cooler and while the temperatures were definitely on the higher side the boost clocks were all basically normal there was no thermal throttling here so I'm happy to say that the results that you'll see here should be relatively accurate. The graphics card I chose for this was a GTX 1080 that's because uh, one I actually don't have the 1080i I did a test with before and therefore that makes it the highest end card that I have available to me to do this test with so that's kind of the, the story of uh, my channel really. Now with that said I'm still running the GTA 5 benchmark to give you a gaming load comparison but I also ran the ASUS RealBench suite which includes a handbrake video render test which is what I'm going to be using for the specific CPU render uh, kind of wattage load uh, which I'll talk about in a second. I'm also including a number of extra measurements and uh, kind of calculations for you to give you a bit of an idea of the sort of well performance per watt for example with gaming also so if you were gaming on your CPU with this sort of configuration, uh, if you're gaming for an average of three, three hours a day with your electricity cost being 13 pence per kilowatt, uh, how, you know, how much would that cost you for a year's worth of gaming? I would like to include also the scoring as well, so the FPS in the GTA 5 4K benchmark on very high settings and all of the ASUS RealBench scores as well to give you a comparison both of the chips themselves and obviously how much power they draw when doing those tasks. The only variable that I haven't fully controlled here is the motherboard and that's because uh, I'm using an ICX motherboard for the uh, 8700K whereas a full size ATX board for the uh, 1800X. It shouldn't make much of a difference at all but just something that I wanted to make sure that you knew when going into the results. So let's jump into the results. First of all in terms of the idle wattages the 1800X was running at 87 watts at idle which is obviously fairly low and a pretty decent uh, sort of score if you like. The 8700K was a little bit on the lower side at 83 watts. This is again mostly a kind of margin of error. You're really not going to see too much difference here, especially in terms of your sort of real world cost for that. Obviously the idle wattage is generally where you're going to be sitting most of the time, but it looks like mo both of these chips have very low power states that they're able to drop into when they're not doing anything really taxing and therefore you end up with a very, very similar wattage. Moving on to the gaming load for the these uh, chips and you're actually looking at pretty similar results here. The 1800X was running at 294 watts at full chat with the GTX 1080 whereas the 8700K was running at 302 watts so realistically relatively within margin of error it was definitely a, a difference. The, the 1800X didn't go much above 300 watts at all in its testing whereas the uh, 8700K did go up to 310, 320 watts at points depending on you know what part of the, the benchmark it was running on so uh, there does seem to be a slight difference here but certainly nothing massive. When it comes to the FPS value for the uh, different chips the 1800X had 82 FPS whereas the 8700K was a little bit higher at 86 FPS but realistically especially at 4K that's probably within margin of error and even if it's not it's still not a massive difference so again I think if you are gaming at a higher resolution you're going to be pretty happy with either of these chips and both of the, the wattages are also pretty similar as well. When it comes to the FPS per watt value, it actually turns out to be basically the same, funnily enough, since all of the both FPS numbers and wattage numbers are almost identical. Technically speaking, the 8700K does have a slightly higher um, FPS per watt value because the wattage isn't as high, uh, the difference effectively isn't as big as the FPS differences, so technically it's slightly higher, but it's still rounding to two decimal places 
is 0.28 for both. And when it comes to the price per year, if you're going with those specific wattages that I've picked here, and again, there are certainly some assumptions that you have to make to make these sorts of calculations, and obviously it will definitely depend on things like the cost per, for electricity per kilowatt for where you are and how much you actually game, and obviously what games you're playing, depending on you know how uh, taxing they are to the CPU and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of variables here, but to simplify it and give you a one number or I suppose two number score, um, the 1800X would cost you around about £41.85, whereas the 8700K would cost you £42.99. So slightly higher, about a pound-ish more, but again, this is a lot, there's a lot of approximations and a lot of uh, variables that you have to account for here to be able to make that sort of calculation. And finally, when it comes to the rendering test, I was actually relatively surprised by this one. So the 1800X drew 173 watts while encoding, whereas the 8700K drew 163 watts, so actually 10 watts less. Now again, this is a pretty close score and you're really not going to see that much of a difference, but uh, I did also want to include the Asus Realbench scores here. These were, were pretty interesting. So the image editing scores were pretty similar with the 8700K coming out a little bit on top, whereas the encoding scores, the 1800X was actually a little bit on top there, actually full reversal, so that's quite cool to see. The OpenCL test uses the graphics card, so there are identical scores, and with heavy multitasking and then the final system score, the 8700K pips the 1800X to the post just a little bit, but still not, not a massive difference here, so I was really pretty impressed with that. Now, of course, all of these tests were run at stock clock, so in theory, if you did really want to maximize your performance and you don't care too much about the wattage that you would require, the 8700K does generally have more headroom, especially if you delid it, whereas the, uh, the 1800X sorry, has uh, a little bit less at headroom. You can only get a couple hundred extra megahertz generally speaking, although with this video coming out at the time that it is, the 1800X isn't too long for uh, the uh, kind of end of life shelf, as the uh, sort of 2800X, if you like, should be out relatively soon. So I'd really like to see what that brings to the table and uh, so what performance and what performance per watt you can get from that as well. If you'd like to see a video on that, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, by the way. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or you want to see me do any more tests like this, let me know in the comments down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can and try and do some testing when possible. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. If you want to support the channel and keep me making these videos on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and sometimes Saturday basis, then take a look at the uh, Patreon link in the description down below or the Amazon and Overclockers Gate affiliate links, which all massively help me out and support the channel and keep me making these videos. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit the subscribe button. There is also some videos over here for you to take a look at if you fancy. And otherwise, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you all in the next video.